How are you, how are you doing, mate? Good, man. How are you? Good to see yeah. you. Oh, well, good. Good to see you too as well. Uh, how are you it's back? Right. Are you back at training now and everything? Yeah, I've been pretty much training since now since I got back from the fight. That like that that Tuesday slash Wednesday when I got back from the fight, I was already back in the back in the gym, getting right back to work. But it wasn't too heavy or anything like that. But already on the mats and feeling pretty good. Yeah, you just can't keep away. Was there anything Never. like uh, specific you was working on when you got back? Was there anything that you was dying to be like? How did he? How did he get this away or something like that? Do you know what I mean? Uh, a little bit, yeah, but not, not so much because I wasn't, I wasn't doing too much striking. I was mostly focused on grappling right when I got back because you mm -hmm. just wanted to take a crazy shot or anything like that, like, to the head, um, just to be smart. But, like, I was talking to actually one of the guys at the gym, Seki. He's a world competitor in Taekwondo, won so many medals, championships and stuff. And so we were talking about that, you know, just seeing spinning kicks and things you could talk about. Uh, but nothing, you know, I mean, I kind of, as, as far as the fight itself, you know, just, Rewatch it, rewatch it, rewatch it, and start thinking about things. And actually, I take it back because your demo and I were talking about it, and it's like you know certain things you need to do better on kicks. So you have to like lean back, have action right off of it, not hold the kick too long. Um, you know, don't show the same look. Uh, being able to counter off that better. So was, yeah, there are definitely things we worked on. It's like things that probably need to do. I just didn't do in that moment, and and and, and paid for that for sure. Mm -hmm. But other than that, mean like. Uh, Kind of just, you know everything. What can I do to get better? That's really what the main focus was and was and still is, and to get back in the octagon here shortly. Yeah, yeah, that's the most important thing is to, like you say, learn from it and get back in there and do better next time. <laughs> but obviously, you, you had a suspension from the UFC as well. So, like, <laughs> I, I was just saying to you a minute ago that you've had uh, three fights now in a short space of time, one month and twenty eight days. So, yeah. it's like. We obviously know you love to fight. What have you been doing with your time since you've had that, this suspension? Oh, man. So, let's see. A few months, I've been here at home, uh, picking up my family, really, training as much as I possibly could. A few weeks, you know, it was kind of like limited training you know, at, at first, you know, to let my body heal, my brain, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you always think you're fine, but, you know, I'm great coaches and staff around me. Like, and just the UFC PI staff, like, I mean, they've helped me a bunch, like, send me all the stuff from Thorne. It's been really cool. So like that's been huge in my recovery. Uh, just went down to Sanford MMA in Florida in uh, Deerfield Beach, and they're really really cool. Coach Hugh Jones, Kami, and all those guys. And I got some really fun rounds. And you know, Coach Rocha at the uh, Fight Sports with Jiu Jitsu. That was a lot of fun. So man, you've been getting some great quality work in. So many partners. Which is definitely a blessing. I haven't really taking time to myself, man. Um, went down to the beach a bunch. Uh, like. Love the water, love love it. So it's a good time to think and just and get ready, get right back into. It. Been watching fights, man. Still a fight fan, so that's been that's been cool. I, I'm excited to you know rebuild and, and get right back in the octagon. So been just watching fights and seeing he'll be available to fight in January, February, and March, or all three months, or whatever whatever opportunity I can get to fight and just figuring like what well, you know what's next to do my, to do with my life, man. And, um, so that's really what I've been up to. And my little sister, shout out to her and the team. They got their first volleyball win, Audrey Kell Knights. So first one of the season, her first high school volleyball game. Couldn't watch it like physically because of COVID, but I was screaming online, watching it, uh, <laughs> watching it virtually. So that that was fun. And just hanging out, hanging out, man. It's been great. And congratulations to your sister for her volleyball. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Damn, I'm super proud of her. I'm still like just smiling from here to here. Yeah, I guess it's super, super cool. She's the baby of the family, so it's been cool to see. Yeah. Cool to see. Yeah. And uh, obviously working at uh, Sanford MMA, there's loads of top UFT, UFC talent in there. And I think I saw... Yeah, a, man, that's awesome. I think I saw a story of you working with, uh, I think his name's Phil Hawes, is that it? Yeah, Philip Hawes, yeah, man. Yeah. He's a Phil Hawes, Phil Hawes. He's a, he's a beast, man. He's really a beast, man. That, that knockout that he got on Fight Island was no joking. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's definitely an awesome training partner. Solid fighter, man. I'm excited to see what he does and see who he fights next. Like, we yeah, had some really, really good rounds in, man. Really, really, really solid rounds. And I just got to spend time to talk to him. You know, that's what I'm built for. Like, Tuco, then so, um, Tyler Ray, the guy that I fought my first fight, Gary Fosick, so many guys, man. But, like, Philip and I did get a, you know, a bunch of work in, and it was really, real cool, man. So I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a great gym to, uh, get some work in with the talent that they've got there, the coaches, and like you say, 
they've got people yeah. across UFC and Bellator and, and many other promotions as well. Yeah, more than all that stuff, man. It's really good job, man. Mm-hmm. So obviously, mm-hmm. let's get into the fight a bit. Um, how obviously you mentioned you watched the fight back. What was your sort of first impressions of your performance? Man, I, well, I feel like I started off a little slow. As, as far as like me personally, I don't think I fought like to the best of my ability. I, mean, I, I didn't get going. I didn't really start putting combos together. Um, not to take away from Joaquin's awesome performance, man. He had a great showing, man. He came, he was hitting, he was fighting hard. Uh, there are things that I liked that I did, and there are things that I was like, man, I could do better than that. So as far as you know, getting taken down, oh, well, I got taken down. It was, it was a solid takedown, smooth, but I could I'd probably count on that, get a little bit more active and, you know, have a first response, second response, and, and, and put that position in my advantage. Um, I was happy, you know, I was hitting, hitting some knees and timing some elbows. I was, like, that was – I was happy about, but I really like to you know, make sure that I'm engaging and moving more because I feel like what helped me in the Maki fight and, and the other fight really that I've done well in is when I'm moving, right? And I think I was a little too stockish and and, and not fighting the way I know I need to. Uh, the result, right? You know, more the knockout's the knockout. It's not like I'm necessarily like sad or hurt by the fact that I got knocked out that way. It was like you hate losing, man. I love to win. And it's like, all right, so what can I do better next time, right? And, you know, the, early in the fight, I caught kicks. I caught the kicks. That's, that's great. But you can't hold on to them too long. You can't. You have, to, you have to count off those right away. You have to move. You have to do something. Don't put yourself – don't leave your head on the center line. So that's something I you know, definitely took note of and make sure I don't do it again. Mm-hmm. And, um, man, I mean, I'm, I'm blessed, too, that I'm healthy. So it's just like I look at the fight. I'm like, I think it was a close fight, especially, you know, it was closer than it needed to be. But the fight kept going and blew it all pulled it off, right? And you know, I always want to be optimistic and I always want to say, like, I thought it was, it was starting to push, 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 push the pace. And I was happy with the leg kicks, man. Those were, those were hitting well. And I was just en- enjoyed the fight. I mean, I love getting in there mixing it up. So, but it's like, you know, you learn from that for sure. And it's like now there, there are things I know I can definitely do better. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, definitely. It, it was a close fight up until that point. And I think even yeah. with the kick, it, it's – it's not really like so much your fault or it's more of a chance thing that it just happens because if you watch it in like slow motion or something, it, you can tell that it has to be the right moment that you were just thinking about moving in and he done that at the right time when you were moving in sort of thing. So it was like mm. a sort of connection from both ways instead of just... Because yeah. I think if he hit you and you weren't moving in, it would have been less of an impact and maybe not hurt you as much. I wish. <laughs> I wish, <laughs> I wish I'd been, I'd been a lot happier if I was like, oh, see it or something. But, you know, you also learn from that too, right? It's like, yeah. well, sometimes when you, somebody's spinning, make sure you know there's something. When somebody's turning right their back is to you, watch out for something spinning or have that, have that in your mind. So it's, uh, yeah, definitely takes two to tango, right? But, yeah. Uh, you, need, you need a dancing partner, but sheesh, I wish I wasn't that dancing partner in that moment. <laughs> you know, so, but, of course. But I, uh, yeah, for sure. But yeah, it definitely happened that way, man. And I, I, I look at it like I never want to look at it as like a lucky shot because I feel like that stops people from learning, right? Like mm-hmm. you can look at a fight and say, "Oh, you just got caught." For sure. I mean, I understand like crazy kick, whatever. Like you really don't see it much, so I understand that. Man, there's so much to learn from it, though. Like so much to take from that one moment in the fight. And I don't take anything from any part of the fight. Like you can definitely take part of like you know take a lesson from where I I, I failed there and. You know, it's like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna become from that now? Right? You know, you get you get tagged in the video every day. Joaquin's fighting this weekend, so it's like, it is what it is. I mean, great at this moment, but it's like, hey man, like, there's so many more fights ahead of me, and I'm looking forward to finishing these fights too. So, mm-hmm. but that's how that's how I look at it. But it's like, there's so much more from that moment that I I just want to leave it as like a, a lucky kick or a chance. I just want to say, oh man, like for sure, I see that, I see that, I understand that. It's like, man. What could I do better? What could I do better? And I feel like that's going to make me the fighter that I'm you know, becoming and the guy that's you know, called me to be. So, anyway. I think uh, M- the MMA community is quite fickle as well because it, when you look at like uh, Buckley, for example, the fight before he fought you, he got knocked out by Kevin Holland and nobody's talking about that. Everyone's talking about oh, yeah. his last fight. So it, it, sure. it works on a basis of your last fight. So if you go out there and the next fight you put on Put on a performance, we're going to be talking about that for sure. Hey man, I, I guarantee I will. I just want to know mm-hmm. who's ever won the fight. So, <laughs> and uh, gosh, I'm waiting for that day. Praise January 16th, man. That, that Holloway cater card, 
Oh God, what a fight! What a car! What a, that's like, I was thinking about that. That fight is is so, so good. I remember it got leaked, like um, not leaked, but someone announced it a while back, and then it was announced as like it was fake and stuff like this. But then when it got announced <laughs> yesterday, I was like, yes, what fight? Oh man, I swear, if that fight was announced months and months ago, out of out of. I'd become the UFC's media team, and I would have been like, hey, make this fight happen now. <laughs> this happen now. There's two solid guys who like to fight, man. Yeah. That's, 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 that's what's fun to see. And got, I don't think anybody's going to go for a takedown. <laughs> no. So, no, I can't happen. see it happening. <laughs> no. And obviously, yeah. um, you was on Fight Island with, uh, with your dad, and he obviously cornered you that night as well. Was there any like conversations about the loss afterwards with your dad? Because I know he's like a wise man as well, like you, like yourself. <laughs> oh, appreciate it, man. But my, my dad's a great guy, wise. He's my, my. He's a man I really want to be. Really, like, if they like, ask me like, how do you want to be? I want to be like my dad. And uh, he's like, there's no need to cry. There's nothing to worry about in the, in the ambulance. And he was tough. He was, he was fine. But of course, he saw his son lost. I don't think he's happy about that lose, and in that way. But he was more like, hey, in order to get to it, you got you to go through it, right? And he's like, I know what he's talking about. You know, to get to that championship, I had to go. That was part of my journey. And of course, I always wanted to be the undefeated fighter. That was the, <laughs> that was my thing. It's like, yes, you can still be undefeated if you lost mentally, right? Like, of course, I, I lost, right? And it's like, own it. And, and, and I do, right? I own the failure. But it meant, in my heart, it's like, you don't have to be defeated. And he and I were just talking about that. He's like, hey, man, I'm like, thank God you, you still get a fight. You're going to get another fight soon, hopefully, right? And he's like, check on your mom and he's like thank god i'm here right it's great to have him there because my mom would have been texting and calling and and wondering like how's he doing and and you know she was able to communicate with him and kept her calm so i'm happy about that and he just it's like and my dad would always tell me when i was young in order to know my glory you must first understand my story and and he used to do these speeches and it always always stuck out to me it's like it's a it's an awesome quote and it's the truth because you the, when when you make it to the top, people are always going to say like, "Oh, he just had a great undefeated career." But like, what did he do after he failed, right? And that that's part of my story, man. And then like, when you do see me crying, <laughs> we had those great fights and, the, and the, those championship fights, those, those main events and all that stuff. It's like I always remember that moment. And we were talking about that, and he said, "There's no need to shed a tear. It's okay. It'll be fine." And I, I kept saying sorry to him, really, because I was like, "Man, like I just I wanted him to see me have like a great fight and a finish, and I, that didn't happen." It was also great to share. Like the UFC treated my dad like he was a UFC fighter, man. And I couldn't be more proud to work in this organization with these people and the whole staff. Like they made him feel special, and it made me feel real special to be a part of this. All like so, like that was just a, a cool moment. And we were just we were, after that we were kind of just laughing and talking about like how how the week was for him and and and, and what's next. And you know, at first I was just kind of like you know just thinking about it. And I lay down just more like oh gosh, like. I wish that, but then he just kept reminding me, he's like, man, like what God has for you is for you. And what God's going to do is always better than you could ask or imagine. And what God is going to work this out for you. So he just kept reminding me about faith. And that, that's what I really appreciate my dad. He never let it go. It wasn't like, all right, God, forget this. God was like, no, even in this time, you still got to praise God. Even in this time, you have to still thank God. And then when you get back to the hotel, actually, most people don't know this, you go to the hospital, right? And it's off campus. So they don't even catch COVID. So you go back to the um, you go back to the hotel, but there's a whole other wing of the hotel at the W, which is awesome hotel, by the way. And uh, he was in a different room, and I was in a different room. And he was like, "What? You got a separate from my son?" And I was like, "I'm fine." He's like, "Okay." My mom's like, "You gotta be with your son." Give me some. That's like, he'd be fine. And we just thinking, and we talked, and he will be up. And it just just kind of give me some time to you know to be alone and, and think about everything he said. I mean, that just really gave me a lot of peace. You know, I was. Like really, if anything, nothing that was like sore was my neck <laughs> from getting whipped like that. So it wasn't my head was bothering me anything like that. And he and I just we just had a great, great conversation. And we just talked, and he called me and he's like, "What are you praying about? What are you thinking about?" And it was just he's like, "Watch what's gonna happen. You better get ready to get back in there and get back to training, and you'll figure it out when you get home." And he was just saying um, he was honored to be there. So having him there, it just it put everything into perspective for me. I mean, for me, my the biggest thing was always wanting to be undefeated. I'm like just pushing for that, pushing for that. But and it never took away my like my love for fighting, maybe love fighting even more. But I was like, man, like what can I be now? What can I be now? And like watch what I do. So he just kept reminding me of that. And that was real cool, man. That was real, real cool. So I appreciate him a, a, a ton more than I can explain. Yeah, that's so. amazing to have that moment with your dad to share that moment. Obviously, it's uh, not the yeah. moment you was thinking of, but 
it's still, <laughs> it's still a building block to where you're going to be in the future, really. Yes, sir. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. I hope I, I want the corner to be again one day. I love for him to. One day I want to be able to get that title and hand him the belt. So that'd be, that'd be my dream. Man. Yeah, so keep that'd be amazing. Up. And obviously, you're only eight and one, and you're you're short. It's a short-lived MMA career so far because you you've literally been in the game like two or three years, I think. <laughs> yeah, but pretty much. Yeah, to include my amateur career, I, mean, I went pro last year, and this is my second year as a pro, and it's it's. I mean, it's going well, really. It's really going well. So I'm, I'm half the time's not even fighting either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for yeah, really, because COVID, because. Fights dropping, seven fights dropping. I could have had 15 fights by now, really, if all those fights went through. And I would have. I, they won't really, I guess, count the, the – I'd had 18 fights by now. I mean, that talk about the experience and the lessons and the learning and the – hey, it would be awesome to be 18 of That would be a real cool story within two years, 18 and 0, or 15 and 0, whatever it is. Like, that would have been cool. I guess God had to say, bro, we, we got to chill. I'm not thinking about it because I was like, well, if I had six fights and then – I had those seven, that'd be 13, and plus the two more. I was like, wait a minute, well, I guess the Maki fight and the and the Adams fight. And then this fight, that put me at about like at the 18, 19 mark right now. And I was like, oh, huh, okay, maybe, maybe I didn't need to slow down when you think about it. Because I'd have taken out. Every time I get a fight and get a victory, I'd ask Coach, can I fight? He's like, don't ask me for a week. And then right when that week was over, I was like, all right, can I fight again? So, <laughs> and, I mean, I, want, I love that. I love this. I want to keep fighting, man. I want to fight at least every Every other month would be awesome. You know, I can they get six fights per year, seven. Next year we're gonna get seven. I wanna beat the six mark fight mark. I didn't get that. So but we'll see. We'll see what comes to that. <laughs> That'd be interesting to see uh because obviously sure. there's a lot more people doing this now, are fighting a lot more consistently in the year. I'm not sure what the record, I'm loving it. I'd like to know what the record of like how many fights someone's gonna get in the year. <laughs> I'll go for it. I'll go for twelve, fifteen, twenty. <laughs> Okay, let me fight. Imagine you fight four times in a month. You take a month off. You fight twice. You re ramp it up. You're four again. Oh, I've been thinking about it. <laughs> Trust yeah, you it. I'm, sure I'm working on it. I'm working on like she. You might as well just leave me there. Leave me wherever the fights are. Let me get out there a week one. I'll stay on Fight Island or go back to Vegas. I don't mind. I'll live. I'll live there for a little bit. But so it depends on what. What coach says and and, and what I, what's smart? Yeah, I'm probably not the one thinking about the smart part. I just wanna I wanna fight. So yeah. we'll see. <laughs> so obviously, uh, we're we'll getting into a bit how you handled the loss now because no. you handled it better than like most people could ever dream about handling a loss, and you actually gained from it. Your oh. stock rose from what seemed to be one of the worst moments of of your career, and mm-hmm. it. It was unbelievable, really, because you gained, I think, over 20,000 followers on Instagram and stuff like that, Yeah, which is amazing. Really? It's, um, and sorry, I missed the first part of Frizzle, but you said after that, what did you say? Uh, just sit, which part did you miss? You said, you said um, how it grew, and then I think, you know, like, you were you asking me a question about that, or did it, did it? Oh, no, I was just stating the fact that it grew. Oh, oh sorry, my fault, because so I don't know if I missed it, but yeah, that's a blessing, it really is, man. I was like, What? I mean, I was like, my phone is going crazy. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. I just thank you to everybody, man. It means a lot. It really does. Because it's like, you know, after after thing like that, you don't think you really get anything good from that. And, 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 you know, God came through and really blessed me with some awesome support. So, I mean, it's like, it's a great thing to have young in my career. And I've been guys in the UFC for many years and they don't, have that and social media does play a big role right you know, mm-hmm, social definitely. media and everything like that you don't live for social media but it's like it's a way that you can also just you can you can connect with more people you can leave an impact you can you can you can you never know who you'll meet you'll never know what you'll have I made mean, a cool thing like talking to a guy like you right like we can i can share this with thirty seven thousand people right mm-hmm. that i've never that maybe i only known a hundred of them, right? But now so you can share with people who've, who've never seen it. It's like adding clips and got a YouTube channel coming out now and, 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 and all this other stuff. So it's just like, how cool is that? Like, and it's like, you get to share what, like, what you love, literally, because what I love to do, I get to speak to these people, man, and they, and they, they still supported me after falling. I think it's just, hopefully it shows kids, like, if you, if you don't have something to go your way, man, just do what your parents taught you and act, treat yourself, represent yourself the best, man, and God will bless you for real, so... I just I thank God because I mean, of course, in that moment I wasn't feeling all, oh yeah. Like, mm-hmm. But when you look back on it, you're like, man, thank God. Because imagine if I just went said something crazy after the fight, people understand. But it's not you have the, you don't have the same 
same same uh, response, right? Mm-hmm. And, so I'm grateful, man. They have great coaches who t- challenge me, and um, the great family who's 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 taught me that since I was a kid. How you respond is more important than since what you do all the time. Definitely, and uh, obviously the MMA community reacted like in the nicest possible way towards you saying the best things and stuff. And I think one of the yeah. t- one of the tweets that stood out to me was someone said about um, you need to challenge uh, Wonder Boy. Stephen Thompson for the nicest mother ever, ever about. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That made me laugh. Yeah, that made me laugh too. I was like, hey, I'll, I'll just, we can challenge one. He's funny. I, I like Stephen Thompson. He's a good fighter. But that's yeah. funny. He is really nice too. I've seen him. And it's, it's just, that's funny. That, that, one, that one touched. I remember seeing that same exact tweet. And I just remember just like chuckling about that one. <laughs> yeah, it was very funny. So um, one thing I've got to ask you about while you're on it is, uh, How's Brian Barbarena doing? My man, B, he's doing well. He's doing yeah. well. Um, he, he's uh, he said that yesterday, the day before, was his best he's ever felt, uh, and he's he's improving about six to eight weeks till he get back to training. And you know, he wants to fight. I think in March or something. So, yeah, end end of March or maybe not end of March. Just I think in March. No, Brian. Brian probably wants to fight next week. Really, let's be honest. But he's probably being smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, I talked to him a little bit. We talked to text him last night. Talking today. So I mean, I'm hoping he, uh, I'm hoping he does, hoping he uh, gets right back to it. But he's doing well. He's recovering. He's enjoying time with his family. If Brian's with his family, then he's good. Yeah, you know, like if yeah, that's all right. that's one thing I know. He loves his kids and his wife and his, his farm animals and his pets. So if Brian's with his family, he's good for sure. I can't remember where I heard it, but I think it might have been that you you might have said it to me. But it was something like, as soon as he fights, he just wants to go home and be with his family. As soon as oh, the fight's yeah. done, he just wants to go home. <laughs> like Brian is all like, "Woo, fight, 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 fight!" And then he fights, beats the person up, and he's like, "All right, time to Take go back now." Like, Brian could care less. Like Brian, Brian, and like we're all, we're all similar, you know. Like the, the the men that we're surrounded by, nobody really like cares about going out, partying, or like nothing like that. It's just more when he's done. It's not even less of an explore. He wants his kids there. He wants his wife there. And also too, his last fight in Vegas. Was the first fight his wife wasn't there, so I know that was definitely challenging. You know, they're best friends; they've been married since they were nineteen or so. It's like that you could imagine you have somebody here all the time, and then you're not. Like it's a little bit different. The victory might not feel the same, but I knew when he got back home, he was like, "I called him. He's like, what's up?" <laughs> and I, it was like completely different, Brian, and and and, and it just an awesome experience. And plus, he had poison ivy before the fight, so just all this stuff going on. It's just like and Brian's like, "Whoop, here we go." Yeah, so you know, it's um it's good to see him back with his family and and and, and his kids and nothing like that. So yeah, well, I hope he has a speedy recovery because it was a bit of a, mm-hmm. a surprise what when I saw it on Instagram and stuff like he's got a massive oh. scar and stuff, hasn't he? Yeah, be a sweet scar though. Yeah, be a sweet one, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna look awesome when he's gonna fight again. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. For sure. Somebody should like tattoo it and like get like a tic tac toe board and like make <laughs> the, the, the scar like going through the like through the uh, X's or something. So he's always always he always wins. Uh, but that's my cool idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. when would you like to return? Or not when? Sorry. Who would you like to return against? Who would I like to fight? Yes. Oh, man. Why do you have to, why do you have to ask me that question? I don't because know. Oh, you God. always answer it in the same way. I know you do because you want to fight you know, everyone and anyone. But <laughs> I've got anybody to ask. Willing to, anybody willing to? That's not my training partner. How about that? There you go. That, that's a new answer. That's a that, new that one. That's a good you one as well. Heard <laughs> you heard it first. You heard it first, man. Anybody who... Um, yeah, anybody willing to, man. Anybody willing to fight. Anybody willing to step in. Honestly, like, I'd be honored to. I got I got tech. Where is Jack Marshman from? Is he from Wales? Well, no? uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Welsh, right? Yeah, I think. I had time to find him. Jack. That'd be cool. Um, uh, man, I had time to find him. Stewart, Todorovic, you know, a bunch of guys, man. There's so many, there's so many young 85ers out there, guys coming up. I was going to – a guy who did really well, and I think it would be a fun fight, in all respect to him, is uh, Imovov. He made his debut on Fight Island, mm-hmm. and I think we were going to fight. Or that fight was brought up, but I don't have my passport information in time or something like, like I didn't have that yet. So I got it, and the fight had to be moved. Then I ended up fighting Joaquin, 
But man, I remember watching his fight when I was on Fight Island, and he did real well. He fought uh some guy Jordan something, but he he did he did well. And and there's I think the guy's last name was Williams, but I don't know. Like a contender series guy. But man, it was cool to see him about fight, man. And he's a good fighter from I think that and then they fight in France and I had to fight him or whatever. Any any of those guys. I'm not really specifically calling anybody out. It's not my style, but just cool guys you get tagged to fight. And a guy named Coppola, if I got tagged to fight. I think he's a, a striker, so it'll be fun to get in there and, and go to work and you know, just really looking to fight and claim victory, man. So we always want to. I'd love to. Just let me know when and where. I'll stay. If it's on Fight Island, I'll stay out there for a few weeks. If it's in Vegas, I'll stay out there for a few weeks too. Whatever's best. Let me just fight. So is that something that you like keep an eye on is when like you maybe get tagged in a in a picture of you in a fighter or maybe like someone mentions it. Is that something you like to do is like cater to the fans a for bit? Sure. Yeah, man, for sure. I mean, I love the fans. Like, I don't know. It's, it's fun engaging with people. I've kind of been a little bit inactive lately because I've been figuring some things out. But, you know, it, it, I haven't done as many interviews right now. And, man, I guess people are asking to do interview after you lose. So, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. But I, I was like, uh, so I appreciate you having me on. I, <laughs> I was thinking, thanks. <laughs> then people have been just uh, tagging me with like guys like like these guys. So I'm like, oh, cool. So I end up watching them or watching like fights like Sean Strickland. Like I like to fight him. You know, just guys like who are some guys who come to fight. And then that's sort of love. And 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 we'll see. So uh, who else was it? Gosh, who um, uh, just fought? She may have Gerald Gerald Mishart. Yeah. Yeah, that's his name incorrectly. I think I respect. Like he's a good fighter. He's a bunch of fights, so that's cool. Darren Stewart, I think he's from. Yeah, he's from UK. You from UK? Yeah. yeah. Where specifically? Uh, you know? London. He's from London. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a good fighter too, man. And he had a good fight against Kevin Holland, so it's like you know he's a good fighter. So that'd be awesome. Um, want to fight a guy who had a win too recently? I mean, that'd be like, that'd be cool. Like, and I think the past couple guys have fought had a loss before that or something. So it'd be except from a contender series fight. But, and then that's okay. And then whoever you throw, whoever's in there willing to fight, I'm honored to. But it'd be kind of fun to fight a guy who had a, a victory before, right? So, yeah, yeah. yeah and, fight the, and fight them. And if any of those guys, too, and the higher ranked guys, man, they need a – somebody hasn't stepped in, I, I'm willing to, man. Like, yeah, you know, like these guys looking for fights, okay, I am willing and ready to go. <laughs> so, that's what I'm yeah. trying to do. Just want to earn, earn my way, man. Earn my way. Great. That's all the questions I got for you, Impa. I oh, appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. No worries. Thank you, Thank you for joining me. me. I appreciate you. Always good having me on. Or, always, good, always, good. <laughs> always good having me on. Always, thank you for having me on. Always good talking to you and being on your show. <laughs> I was trying to say it in my head. I'm like, no, I'm trying to say it in the, like, the right way, but sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, man. Dude, just, dude, when I don't have a fight, my brain's just like, I need a fight. So like, I'm, like, I'm all like, I'm there, but... Just I'm always fighting. thinking about fighting in the back of your mind, aren't you? Yeah, so I was thinking about fighting. And I, I meant to say thank you for having me on. It's always good to talking to you. <laughs> Sorry. I don't, I don't speak this well sometimes. Yeah. Oh man, oh, thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Like you said that. No. Yeah, you're playing, bro. No. No. <laughs> Sorry. No worries, man. man. Anyway, I'll speak to you soon, mate. Enjoy your time <laughs> off. Yeah, as much as you thank can. You as much. Man. Okay. God bless. See ya.